This video is on the objective understand and interpret critical values. Now this is the second video on this so I'm not going to do as much explaining as on the first one. So I'm just going to go through the problem and it's one of those interactive types where you move the dots around to the appropriate things and just go through and do that and uh, you'll see. All right. So here an inventor working at a science tech lab believes innovations in satellites are increasing. The inventor would like to test the claim that the average number of new ideas for satellite development per month at the science tech lab is over 60 new ideas. Using the com computed test statistic of 1.05, so again this person took a sample found that sample mean and then found the z-score for that sample mean and the distribution of sample means. This would be like a z-score or a t-score if it was a student's t they're working with. We don't know that. So computed test statistic of 1.05 and a critical value. Now remember critical values are like the entrance way, the entrance, the boundary of the rejection region of 1.28. Is there enough evidence for the inventor to reject the null hypothesis? All right, so let's think about what kind of a test this is. Right? Is it left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed? Now the claim is that this average mu, I'll call it mu, right, for mean, mean for the population. The claim is that the average number of new ideas per month is, is over 60, greater than 60. So that doesn't involve equality. That's going to be the alternative hypothesis mu is greater than 60. And then the null hypothesis would be that mu equals 60, or you know, is less than or equal to, but is equal to 60. But mu is greater than 60 is the alternative. That would be a right-tailed test. Right, so move this dot here so that the right tail is shaded. And then the entrance to this purple region is the critical value. Right? They said the critical value for this test 1.28, so I move the black dot here to 1.28. Okay. And remember the area, this purple area, the area of the rejection region is alpha, that significance level. All right. And then the test statistic for this person's sample was 1.05, so that's where I'm moving the red dot to 1.05. All right. So based on this evidence, you know, the test statistic for the sample is not in the rejection region. So that means I would not reject the null hypothesis of equality, right? We we would le we would keep the null hypothesis that the mean was equal to 60. All right, null hypothesis always involves equality. So they're just asking, would you reject the null? No. Uh, no. There is not enough evidence for the inventor to reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic does not fall in the rejection region. Simple as that. Right. But it's got to be the test statistic doesn't fall in the rejection region. The critical value is always in the rejection region. The critical value is the entrance to the rejection regions. Right. Again, they set up the, they do the, uh, read your answer explanations, please, right? Especially if you get something wrong. So you can try to figure out where you went wrong and, you know, do it better the next time. All right, so hopefully these couple videos I've put out help you with, you know, questions related to this objective. And thank you very much for watching.